welcome all of you to the ninth edition of the European Youth Week. You are the most informed and the most educated generation there has ever been. Make the most of it and define your future. turnout for European elections among young people is really low and it really worries us but we do see somehow a change. Young people more and more are claiming this right to decide. You see all these movements of young people on, on climate in the last months. Clearly they, they want to be given the, the right to decide about their future so we have to give them all the space to do it. I'm very much in the target audience of, uh, of this event. I'm part of uh, Erasmus Student Network and I wanted to see what's going on, uh, who is represented here, what can I learn new about uh, democracy, about active citizenship. I wanted to come here to meet other people from other organizations and learn from their experiences to develop really good quality like projects. I wrote One World, One Nation because I believe that borders are artificial. We are basically all the same and we should look at our similarities and not at our differences. That's, that's my message. <laughs> Seeing the European Union being involved in an event that directly involves the youth in democratic participation is a big step in the right direction, I would say. Democracy and me means to me uh, voting regardless of your race, your age, your gender, everyone is able to vote no matter their circumstances in life or social background. What would you propose to do to invite your friends or neighbours to vote? Creo que es también importante tra transmitir a la juventud la idea de que todo puede ser divertido también a pesar de la gravedad que estamos viviendo. What better way to solve this problem than to encourage people to create a voting squad? I'm here to present my idea uh, of creating a small group of people who go and prepare together to, for election day. So what you do is you create a Facebook, Messenger group, Viber, WhatsApp, and you make sure that people know when, where and how to vote. Isn't it also up to the politicians to make it a bit more inclusive for young people, not just including them in the dialogue? In 10 years, in 20 years, in, in 30 years, you will be in in deciding positions, you will be the new leaders of Europe. We have to convince the politicians that young people are not liability but an asset for the future. All data show that uh, young people in Europe are more committed to the European project than the other ones. So we have to support them and we have to, to keep them motivated. I think the most valuable thing of uh, the Spinelli Prize is that it combines a prize with which you can actually do things um, and obviously network where you can start collaborations and for us that really turned out to be a huge asset. Behind there is a group of youngsters who took part and had the chance to, to take advantage of the different EU programs and they are sharing with other people how this experience really changed their life. I'm a book, so I'm talking about my experience uh, as a former volunteer. Every project, it somehow like, changes you. Personally, professionally, you gain some skills, uh, some competences, some knowledge, you meet people, you get to know the world. I decided to study social work when I come back to Latvia. So this is really, really huge thing for me to figure out what to do. We're in uh, Hungary, Magyar, in Budapest, uh, with uh, the uh, Budapest Bike Mafia. We wanted to get in contact with the European Solidarity Corps program because we wanted to have for longer time uh, more foreign volunteers. They bring a lot of cultural heritage from their country. They are fresh, they are young, they have a whole other point of view in each case of the work. I think in all the countries it's very important to, to build the European identity, to, 
to make it clear in the head of the people that, uh, that we can also work together even if we are not from the same country.